Welcome back to Cheddar News, everyone. Last year, Congress approved an extension of the country's safety net for unemployed individuals when the pandemic started in March of 2020 in an effort to manage the rapid economic downturn. Uh, those benefits that the current president signed into law earlier this year are coming to an end this weekend when federal pandemic era policies will conclude. Well, joining me now is Seth Denson. He's the co-founder and chief strategist at GDP Advisors. Uh, Seth, it's good to see you this afternoon. I did see the report in the Wall Street Journal earlier today that states that have already ended these federal unemployment benefits are actually seeing the same jobs growth as states that are still using the aid. Why do you think that is? Well, I think there's a couple things to consider, and let's. I think it's important to indicate that the data is still somewhat immature, as it's a lagging indicator. Um, in addition, Goldman Sachs did their own study, and they actually did show some difference in the private sector jobs. So I think that's important to correlate here. But you also have to look at specifically those states that ended this early. Um, their unemployment numbers were already lower than specifically those states. Let's take uh, you know California, Illinois, and New York, for example. Pre-pandemic, they actually had lower unemployment than states like Texas, Arizona, Florida, but they also saw a higher unemployment rate. Then today, fast forward to today, and their unemployment rates are about one to two points higher than where we returned. And if you look at the statistical curve, many of these red states had already started reopening. They opened earlier uh, than maybe those other states. So that played a role here. But you also have to remember one thing, Kristen, that's important, is that politics is local. And, and even Texas, where I am, for example, you can look at Collin County, which is a relatively conservative county, uh, their unemployment rates are really low, whereas Austin or Travis County, uh, where Austin resides, may be a little bit higher because they're still under some lockdowns. And so I think that's still playing a role in all of this, but it's really too early to tell. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Goldman Sachs does expect, though, that ending this federal uh, gross up across the board, had that happened earlier, we'd see about a 5% shift in the overall unemployment rate of those that are currently unemployed. Uh, and so it'll be interesting to see if that pans out starting next month. It is interesting, Seth. We've heard a host of reasons as to why people haven't re-entered the labor market, one being unemployment benefits, some people making more money on unemployment benefits than at their actual former job, uh, which has caused a labor shortage. Also, child care being an issue cited. People don't want to be the mask police in an actual retail setting, for instance, like at a restaurant or something like that. And then as well as the case that, um, you know, they didn't want to contract the coronavirus themselves. Given that children are returning to school, um, there are vaccines now for the coronavirus. Uh, do you think we're going to see that sustained further economic jobs improvement that the Fed needs to see in order to raise interest rates eventually? Well, I certainly hope so. Uh, but I do think that, listen, this all hinges on us getting this Delta variant under control, which means getting more people vaccinated uh, so that we can reopen the economy fully. You mentioned uh, parents and jobs. Listen, I'm a parent. I've got three kids, and I'm concerned about their well-being. And, and many people, I think, are weighing those things. Uh, you know, another average, a statistical point that I think isn't pointed out is during the pandemic, we saw all-time savings highs. In other words, more Americans were saving, on average, three times what they were saving pre-pandemic. Their expenses were lower because they weren't having to pay for child care. They were home. Many were receiving that gross up. And so I think a lot of people are, are able to tap into that savings and wait. But another important thing that isn't being talked about is this is effectively a $30 billion shift in funds going into the economy. That's stimulus going into the economy that is not going to be in circulation from the federal government. So it'll be interesting to see what the ripple effect is. All these things are things that Jerome Powell is going to have to consider as he's looking at monetary policy and what he might do in the coming months. Mm -hmm. And what do you think is the right course on that front? Uh, we do expect a taper to start, a uh, lowering of the asset purchases, the monthly bond purchases uh, that we see by the end of this year. But it seems like still at least about a year, two years off before we get any move on interest rates. Yeah, listen, the IMF has actually come out and said that uh, the, the U.S. Fed is going to have to raise interest rates. When the IMF is now championing that, it'll be interesting to see. I think the Fed is going to have to do that. You've now got the White House saying that they're expecting the year-end interest rates to be north or, or, or closer, I should say, to 5%. 5 I think they're about 4.8%, which begs the question, is this really transitory? And if it is, what is that transition period? I think this is the thing that the, the Fed is having to weigh out. I do personally need uh, feel like 
we need to see interest rates raised. Um, I don't know that needs to happen in the remainder of 2021, but I would hedge that we need to do it in early 2022 just to get some of those uh, inflation hedges uh, balanced out a little bit and, and, and certainly get uh, the lending structures redone and monetary policy down. This inflation's got to got to go down. Uh, Seth, we got some disappointing ADP private sector jobs data earlier this morning, about 374,000 private sector jobs added. Economists were expecting about 600,000, so a decent miss there. What's your expectation when we get that all-important jobs report on Friday? Well, I, th I fear that it's going to be very similar to what we saw at ADP today. Maybe not quite as bad. We, we, if we look last month, uh, right, the, the indicators out of ADP, they missed the mark, but then the, the full unemployment numbers came out and they weren't quite as bad. I think that'll probably follow the trend line uh, where it won't be quite as bad. It may even be closer to expectations. Um, but that being said, again, going back to something we just talked about earlier, I think by and large, especially these uh, lower wage jobs, uh, people are wanting and expecting more money uh, when they go back to work, right? So if you think back to the Trump administration, we saw a very low unemployment. That was at a 725 uh, uh, hourly um, rate, uh, minimum wage rate. So I think by and large, uh, those low wage workers are wanting more. And But I will tell you, and we talk to small businesses all the time, they're willing to pay it. Uh, a lot of them are looking at having to close the doors because they just can't get the workers. So this could have a positive effect uh, without the government stepping in on unemployment on I'm sorry uh, minimum wage the private sector could solve for that and I'm hoping it does uh, but I still think we're probably 30 to 60 days getting past this Delta variant spike uh, before we start to see too much movement all right Seth Denson co-founder and chief strategist at GDP advisors uh, Seth thanks again